Just tonight, just hours ago, prosecutors in Chicago dropped all charges against actor Jussie Smollett. Smollett, you'll remember, was facing 16 felony counts for faking an elaborate hate crime against himself back in January. Police say Smollett hired two Nigerian bodybuilders to hang a noose around his neck, pour bleach on him, and scream, This is MAGA country! Because that kind of thing happens a lot in downtown Chicago during the winter months. Smollett then told credulous reporters he had been assaulted by two white racist Trump supporters. Well, as of tonight, police still believe that Smollett was lying about all that. So do prosecutors. They think he concocted the hoax, and they said so yet again today. And yet the state of Illinois is somehow, for some reason, dumping the case anyway. In exchange for the $100,000 he has already paid in bond, Smollett will walk free. His record will be expunged. Everything will return to normal like it never happened. Smollett described this decision as a victory, not just for him, but for the broader cause of civil rights. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I have been accused of. This has been an incredibly difficult time, honestly one of the worst of my entire life. But I am a man of faith and I'm a man that has knowledge of my history and I would not bring my family, our lives or the movement through a fire like this. I just wouldn't. Now I'd like nothing more than to just get back to work and move on with my life. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. Uh-huh. Okay, a couple of pretty obvious questions here. What is this movement Smollett refers to? Is he in contact with other perpetrators of fake hate crimes? Have they formed a union? Will they hold a convention? There are enough of them they could. And how exactly has Smollett, who last we checked was an actor on a TV show, fought for the, quote, justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere? Was pouring bleach on himself part of that fight? How do the noose and the Nigerian bodybuilders figure into Smollett's struggle for justice and equality? And by the way, why aren't the rest of us laughing at this? It is just too absurd. CNN doesn't think it's funny. They're taking Jesse Smollett very seriously, as they always have. Jeff Zucker's tiny spokesman emerged this afternoon to declare the whole thing an unfathomable mystery of faith, like the Shroud of Turin. We may never know. The narrative has once again changed from victim, uh, you know, to villain, back to victim. It's been very confusing. As, as Ryan was saying, uh, people don't know what to believe, and we may never really know what happened on the street that night in Chicago. We may never really know. So it looks like we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this whole Jussie Smollett thing. But wait, does anyone know any news reporters? They should have some free time these days post-Russia hysteria. Maybe they could find out more about this. For example, why isn't Jussie Smollett concerned about the two white racists he says attacked him? Shouldn't he be leading the charge to lock these villains up? According to Smollett, they're still on the loose. They're free to assault other hapless biracial TV actors who are just looking to get a Subway sandwich at 2 a.m. in the morning on the streets of Chicago. And we need to stop them before they do. And what about the Chicago Police Department? It's led by an African-American chief, but that doesn't mean it's not part of the wider racist conspiracy. It must be. Chicago cops just framed Jussie Smollett as a liar and destroyed his reputation. And yet, for some reason, Smollett doesn't seem to care about that. He says he just wants to, quote, move on. Hmm, that's odd. And what about the Nigerian brothers? Last month, both CNN and the Chicago Tribune reported the men had told police they'd rehearsed the attack on Jussie Smollett. Was that a lie? Will Smollett sue them now for defamation? Other news outlets report that police discovered rope, bleach, and masks in the brothers' apartment. Apparently, Smollett's phone records show he was talking to the brothers immediately before and immediately after the attack, he alleged. What was that all about? Well, we could go on and on, but why bother? You know exactly what's happening here. Smollett isn't getting off because he's innocent. He's not innocent. He's something better than innocent. He's famous. The charges against him were dropped because someone in power called someone else in power and said, let him go. None of this had anything to do with justice. It's the opposite of justice. Even in famously corrupt Chicago, what was happening was just too obvious. The mayor and the chief of police pretended to be very shocked by it. If you want to say you're innocent of a situation, then you take your day in court. I would never, if someone falsely accused me, I would never hide behind a brokered deal and secrecy, period.
Where is the accountability in the system? You cannot have, because of a person's position, one set of rules apply to them, and another set of rules apply to everybody else. In another way, you're seeing this play out in the universities, where people pay extra to get their kids a special position in universities. This is a whitewash of justice. A whitewash of justice. So how did the state's attorney who dropped these charges answer that? Well, she issued a statement explaining that the charges against Jesse Smollett were dropped in part because of his, quote, volunteer service in the community. Okay. What exactly was that service? Well, according to a news account tonight, Smollett spent a total of 18 hours over two days at Jesse Jackson's lobbying organization, the Rainbow Push Coalition. While he was there, Smollett spent his time, and this is a direct quote, stuffing membership envelopes, working in the group's bookstore to sell merchandise, and critiquing its Saturday broadcast. He also, quote, worked with the music director on a plan to build the choir. Apparently, the community was greatly enriched by all of this. We should note that Jesse Jackson, who runs it, is one of the most politically powerful people in the city of Chicago. It helps to have friends like that. And if you don't believe it, just go ahead and try it yourself. Go ahead and stage a fake hate crime in which you slander an entire group of people on the basis of their skin color and political beliefs. Then head over to Good Morning America and conduct a tearful interview with the sympathetic Robin Roberts. Describe yourself as a victim of systemic racism in this country. And then get caught doing it. Tell us how you do. Then let us know when the visiting hours are. We'll come see you in prison. Smut's not going to prison. He was smarter than that. He knew he would never be punished. He knows Jesse Jackson. He's friends with Kamala Harris and Barack and Michelle Obama. Don Lamont at CNN texts Jesse all the time on his cell phone and brags about it. Jesse Smollett may claim to fight for marginalized people, but he is not one of them. In fact, he occupies the highest rank of privilege in our society. He's above the law. Increasingly, there seem to be quite a few people like that in this country. You'll recognize him because they're the ones always lecturing you about how bigoted and unfair America is. What they don't understand is that they are proving that point.